Um, Here. <laughs> curious, I mean, you know, these events that on Fight Pass, they feel a bit bigger every, every time. Your thoughts on the event and, and tonight as it went? Yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, you know, the Fight Pass team and I have talked a lot about, you know, how, you know, just from my insights in competing in Jiu-Jitsu for so long, how we can kind of, you know, improve the events, just little things here and there. And, uh, you know, they've listened to a lot of the things that, that we've talked about and things that I've said. And I think every event is just going to get better and better and better. And you know, the kinks will be worked out as we go on. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's going to get serious. Um, th this event was, you know, the crowd's amazing. I think we can definitely do a bigger crowd next time because, uh, you know, we're selling out. They're selling out every event. There's not that many people, but every event now is selling out. And, uh, you know, the rules, uh, I think it's cool if they have, like, a hybrid rule set where they have, like, it's not all EBI rules. They did, like, rounds, and they did a, a, a judge's decision. Uh, and then they had Roman's match went to a draw. So I think they're going to... Uh, I think implementing the EBI rules and maybe ADCC rules and judges' decisions, I think it's unique in the fact that it's not just one rule set across the board. Um, whereas if you know, EBI has just one rule set, who's number one has just one rule set. Um, and you can kind of tailor the rule sets to the athletes um, where like eight, uh, UFC athletes don't really practice the EBI rules that much. So you know, around 10-9 uh, you know, decision is a little bit better and more comfortable for them. So I think it's really cool what they're doing with that. Uh, listen, we're an MMA-centric media core here, so obviously it feels bigger to us when it's on Fight Pass, but for you and someone who's involved at the highest level of the sport, when it is on this platform, do you feel like, oh, we're getting newer eyes to the sport of jiu-jitsu? For sure. The whole thing is just to take the, the average MMA fan, which is already involved in combat, and just to convert him to a jiu-jitsu fan. And then, you know, that's better for everybody. It's, you know, it's better for us as athletes. It's better for the sport as a whole. There's more eyes in the sport. And then, uh, you know, you convert a UFC fan into a jiu-jitsu fan, and now you have more people going to seminars. You have more instructionals uh, being sold. And you can convert your average MMA fan into, uh, into uh, a, a an instructional DVD or a private lesson. And it just, the bigger the sport is, the better it is for the athletes, better it is for everybody. And I think the UFC is doing a great job at, at really, you know, going uh, and taking grappling seriously and, and getting into the sport. The uh, final for the tournament, you know, you were there, you were shouting instruction. How did you feel both athletes performed and where did it go right for guys and where did it go wrong for guys? <laughs> Uh, I think it was really surprising uh, that both guys are guard players, but neither guy wanted to play guard. I think that Felipe had a pretty good strategy coming out and trying to pull on the head and get Craig tired because Craig notoriously has a pretty terrible gas tank. Uh, but the round was only 12 minutes. Craig purposely uh, negotiated a shorter time. So it's kind of hard to completely exhaust a guy in 12 minutes if you're wrestling and hand putting isn't, isn't high level. Um, and then, you know, Craig is very experienced on their EBI rules, so not much, really much happened in the regulation. Craig picked up a few singles and not much happened. Neither guy played bottom position, so it was kind of just a boring wrestling match. Um, and then tightly contested overtime match uh, where Craig edg edged it out on, uh, on ride time, which doesn't really surprise me because Craig has, you know, a lot of time training with us doing the EBI rounds, and he's competed a bunch of times in EBI, whereas Felipe is more of like a traditional IBJJF, ADCC kind of, kind of athlete. So... Um, yeah, not much really happened, but I'm not really, I would have been, I wouldn't have been surprised if Felipe won, and I also wouldn't have been surprised if Craig won, so. Elsewhere, Nicky Rod won, and uh, made a very public call out of you. I'm not sure if you managed to catch that call out, or if you're heading to the back, did you hear it? Uh, no, but I got, uh, the, I got the gist of it, I mean, everybody wants the payday, right? Um, so, me and Nicky Rod will compete again for sure, but it's going to be in a tournament where he gets no relevancy off my name, and he doesn't make any money for losing to me a third time in a row. Um, so, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll compete again, but, uh, you know, he's like, oh, I want to fight some, you know, just trying to make the rules. Like, you're a brown belt, you won a random tournament. You couldn't even beat, like, you barely beat Roberto Jimenez, the guy I called my submission on. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go out and hit a mounted armbar. Went out and hit a mounted armbar. You barely beat that guy, and he's 40 pounds lighter than you. Um, so you don't call the shots, and uh, you're not making any more money off my name. So I'll compete against him for sure. Um, there's going to be another time, you know, a time in the future where we will compete, like ADCC, and... Uh, That'll be me just going out embarrassing him again, and uh, he won't get any recognition uh, or money from losing to me. Because you have to understand, when guys compete against me, they make two to three times as much as they usually would competing elsewhere. So Nicky Rod has literally no money, so calling me out is the easiest way to actually make some money and move out of my sauna and actually buy himself a house or you know rent an apartment or whatever he wants to do. So uh, yeah, and uh, I figured that was coming because you know. That team relies on just 
the relevancy of me and talking about me to stay relevant themselves. Um, so uh, I'm not really surprised that, that happened. And coming off of the performance that he had, like just doing nothing, uh, not being able to take down Roberto, like not doing anything to Roberto in a regulation, barely winning overtime, not really doing anything of significance with Wagner, having like a pretty tightly contested overtime until he strangled him, then getting his arm broken by Dan, <laughs> who's a purple belt, and then wanting to call me. I was like, dude, just stop. Just, that's just a joke. I'm assuming you weren't too uh, impressed then with his specification that USADA needed to be involved and you both had to pass USADA testing before and after the, any potential competition. Well, first of all, uh, no, because uh, steroids are not illegal in jiu-jitsu. Um, number two, I actually have a, 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 a contract coming to Nicky Rod um, for USADA and WADA, WADA testing from now until the next ADCC. So interesting to see if he's going to sign that. Um, but uh, yeah, like, uh, like I said, um, I make the rules. Um, I name the time, I name the place, I name the rule set because I've earned that because I actually can win matches. Like Nicky Rod winning three matches in a row is actually impressive because like he's literally never done it before. <laughs> so it's actually impressive that he actually has won three matches in a row now. He has slightly more wins now than he has, uh, he used to have half as many losses as he has wins. Now he has, a little, he's, he's, the ratio got a little bit better tonight. Um, still has a 40% uh, a submission rate because EBI rounds don't count when you actually do statistics. Um, so, yeah, if you actually follow the statistics, he sucks. I nearly thought you were going to congratulate him on improving, but we took a left turn. I mean, what are you really improving? First of all, <laughs> they, so they have the long safe rash guards now, so they have to implement the no roll-up rule because Nicky Rod just took the rash guard and rolled it halfway up his arm because he doesn't actually want to do jiu-jitsu. He just wants to break ribs and stall. And then he just stalled to overtime. His overtime is like decent. Um, he has explosive escapes and he can punch strangles in relatively well. Um, but if you actually look at his jujitsu during the regulation, he like literally doesn't know a single move. Like he like hit a like body lock pass on Dan and you know, can do that if he locks his hands. But other than like having a body lock, which he learned from me, uh, because I would just body lock pass him repeatedly every time we trained, um, he literally doesn't know a single move besides that. And last one for me, you know, I think we could probably guess where your mind's at with this, but, you know, Craig Jones has done a podcast, Nicky Rod wins tonight. The relationship between you and those guys has probably never been worse, or is it just the same as your opinion that they're just trying to get cloud off your name and you don't need to care about them? Uh, no, I mean, you guys are going to ask questions and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, but, you know, I think what happened at ADCC was pretty clear. Like, the team split, you know, a lot of the top guys went over there. Um, and, you know, we came home with three golds uh, and a bronze and, uh, and a silver, and they didn't win a single gold. So everyone was like, oh, man, Gordon has no training partners. Who is he going to train with now? And then I just showed up and destroyed everybody. And uh, then everyone's like, oh, man, maybe, uh, maybe it was the wrong decision. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's, uh, you know, they, you know, they're going to win, like, you know, local stuff like this. And, you know, they'll, they'll beat the guys that are up and coming guys. Um, and, you know, maybe even beat some of the guys who are ADCC medalists and champions. But, uh, you know, there's a big difference between an ADCC champion and Gordon Ryan. Hey, Gordon. Um, <clears throat> your body has been all over the news for the past month, month and a half. Um, I mean, do you get flattered that, that everyone talks about your body and, and, you know, how skinny you were and, 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 and now how you're getting healthy and you're, and you're getting back up? Like, is it flattering or is it annoying? It's just amazing to see the level of intelligence of the, of the average Instagram commenter. It's like the only place worse, I think, than Instagram is maybe Reddit and YouTube. Like those are like the top three like dumbest people I've ever had to interact with. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, was like, I was like, you know, sitting around like 220, 225 pounds uh, before my surgery. Um, but I wasn't able to lift because my, I had strep throat and I was sick and I wasn't training. Um, and then I lost like 20 pounds the week of, every week after surgery because I couldn't eat, I couldn't really drink anything. I was you know, taking IVs because I had my tonsils taken out. Uh, so I lost like 20 pounds. But then the second I started eating, I went right back up to like 225. And, you know, now I'm actually eating pretty well because I'm not on antibiotics anymore and my stomach's doing okay. And so now I'm like getting big and I'm starting to lift again and I don't, I'm not doing jujitsu. So when I do jujitsu and I'm doing jujitsu twice a day, it's hard for me to get big because I'm doing cardio all day. Well, now I'm just lifting weights and eating food. So now I'm actually able to get big. So now I'm like 240. So I'm like, you know, 10 pounds heavier, 15 pounds heavier than I normally am. But that's because I'm not doing jiu-jitsu again yet because I still have to wait for my nose to heal. 
Um, so it's like a pretty standard, like if you actually like think about it for like more than 10 seconds, you would like be like, oh, that may actually make sense. But people are just so like, oh man, you see what happens? <laughs> you see what happens when he's not on steroids? I'm like, no, I just like had a surgery and I was dying for, for two months. How is your stomach? Uh, it's doing a lot better. It's not, not, not 100%. It was doing really good until, uh, until I was on 45 days of antibiotics for strep throat. I did like four rounds of antibiotics because they couldn't cure the strep throat. Uh, so I kind of relapsed a little there. And then uh, I had a hard time swallowing pills after the surgery. So I had to like stop taking all my stomach medication for like a week or 10 days. Um, but now that I'm back on, now I'm doing a lot better. Uh, you know, still not 100% for sure. I have my days where I'm still nauseous, but it's uh, significantly better than it was um, you know, when I, when I wasn't competing. Um, and, you know, once I get back into training and I get, you know, the timing back and everything and I'm back in competition shape, if my stomach stays like it is right now, at least I'll definitely be ready to compete relatively soon. Do you have a kind of a date uh, that you would like to compete again? Uh, I'm shooting for uh, Flow has a uh, has an October show, so I'm going to try to do a, the, one of the Flow Grappling October shows as like a warm-up match to come back. And then I know that, uh, you know, the Fight Pass uh, Invitationals is happening here again, December, I think 14th or 15th, they're going to they're gonna shoot for that one. So I'm going to try to do October and December uh, at least if I'm healthy. And then, you know, next year is kind of just riding the wave into ADCC and then kind of doing just sporadic stuff here and there if I, if I want to, and then ramp it up and do like two or three back-to-back -back, uh, as ADCC approaches. So are you planning to grapple Felipe in December for the Invitational? Um, I don't think December for Felipe just because of the fact that I've, like, I've, this is the longest I haven't trained. It's been like almost four months for me just dying. Um, but uh, I think definitely next year, maybe like during like International Fight Week or something during July, um, then, you know, it'll be a good build up because there'll be a lot of, there'll already be a lot of traction because of ADCC. So I can do like last year where I kind of do like a warm up match and then I do Felipe and I kind of build, we build the story into ADCC. Um, so right now, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things because it's been so long since I've actually been able to be training because I haven't been healthy. Uh, so just, you know, dealing with that now and then uh, taking it, pl playing it by ear and, you know, monitoring my health and hopefully, hopefully be back out there soon. Thanks, man. So, man, congratulations on the victory. How do you feel about your performance in the night in general? Yeah, it was pretty fun. You know, I was coming here looking for uh, an entertaining couple matches, few matches, and, you know, got it done. Yeah. How, what was the final like? Talk us through that and, and how it went, and did it sort of surprise you or anything in there, kind of trick you out? Okay, so finals was uh, Nikki Rod, the Black Belt Slayer, versus Big Dan, the giant from, I don't know, Iceland or something like that. So, like a 300-pound opponent versus a... Uh, a 230-pound natural Nicky Rod. So, I don't know. I knew he was going to try to enter legs, and I just kind of used my uh, – use. I, I feel like I, use, I'm so handsome compared to him. He, he might have got a bit distracted, and I was able to body lock pass, you know, due to that distraction. So, got a couple of passes in and, uh, you know, took it to overtime where I know how to shine. As a natural athlete, is this win more important to you to prove that you guys can do that on the biggest stage? Well, I just think I just think jujitsu has a reputation for being unnatural. So I, it's up to guys like me to kind of separate us from the dirtiness, the filth of the the steroid sport, the steroid Olympics. I've I've heard it called so many times, um, you know. And not all of us are on gear. You know, I'm a natural ath athlete. I've been wrestling since I was 12 years old. I've been lifting since I was about um, you know 16, 17, and uh, you know, I'm built for battle, and that's why I look this good. I know it's hard for people that 
are abusing steroids to understand a physique like this is actually attainable through hard work, dedication, and longevity. Yeah. You made a challenge after your win. Um, what was the mindset behind that challenge? Well, let's, let's go back. Um, after my, after I, my match with Gordon Ryan, I broke his foot in the same stage, right? And then immediately after his match, he accuses me of greasing. Greasing in the sport of jiu-jitsu is something like lubing up, putting lotion or oil on before you compete, so you're a bit, you're a bit slippery. So his excuse for me breaking his foot wasn't due to my proper technique, it was due to my lotion. So I was like, all right. I had this podcast with Mark Bell, the Power Project, scheduled. So I was like, all right, I'll let it slide. I give it a few weeks. I go on the podcast, and they ask me about our match. And they ask me what Gordon Ryan's best advantage is. And I was like, it's not technique. It's not strength. It's not size. It is his ability to, to use and abuse steroids. And he didn't like that too much. So my response to him accusing me of cheating was – to tell people the truth. And uh, you know, we have some back and forth on social media and whatnot, so I figure, you know, having this win at UFC Fight Pass Invitational 4 would be a good, a good chance. Oh, in addition, he, so once I, once I, you know, told the world that, you know, he was on gear, which is, is nothing, is nothing too bad, you know, he kind of admitted it. Um, he then accused me of doing steroids, so I take a random drug test, shout out more plates, more dates, Derek randomly drug tests me, you guys can check it out on YouTube. And I pass that with flying colors, no problem. So he's like, oh, it's, it's false, it's false, he's still on steroids. So I'm like, all right, no problem. You, it's still, you're continuing to accuse me of gear. So I win this match. I call him out, 10-minute match, EBL overtime, with stipulations of we both passed USADA drug tests before and after competition. And check this out. Even if he fails, I'll still compete. Just whoever fails has to forfeit half their purse to the opposition. Sounds like a good time to me. He declined that challenge when he was just here. He said that steroids aren't legal in jiu-jitsu. Um, he said they are legal? They are not. They are, they are, steroids are not legal in jiu-jitsu. That's what he said? No, he said they are, they are not illegal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. He didn't, he didn't expand on that, but that's what he said. <laughs> okay. But uh, So he said no, and he doesn't want to give you sort of an organized match because he doesn't want you to make clout and money off his name. Instead, he'll just meet you in a tournament somewhere where he can just sort of bump into you and you won't get mm. any sort of recognition or three times your, your normal purse. Um, if you look at, like, he, Gordon's a guy of statistics and numbers and things like that. So if you look at reality, I have a match against Gordon Ryan where I break his foot and then he all of a sudden retires. How ironic. It's just a bit weird with him standing like right there while he's saying all this. I would say it's better. I agree. Do you think you will end up meeting him again in a tournament or do you think he will realize like the interest in this matchup and that you guys will do a scheduled matchup? You saw the uh, stipulation or not? Uh, I mean, I'm down to compete co in competition against, uh, against the best guys in the world. You know, Gordon's no different. Um, I think even if we did the USADA test, he would not be natural. <laughs> you know, I think it's, he's too far gone to be e ever considered natural. Um, but, you know, uh, this jiu-jitsu is fun for me. You know, it should say, it's just another game. It's just another bout that needs to be dominated, and I'm the guy to do it. And, Nikia, uh, that first escape on Big Dan um, in overtime was just fucking beautiful um, and elite, man. Uh, can you walk me through that? Oh, all right, Big Dan, yeah. So he starts arm bar, and I feel like, you know, I have some space in there, so I kind of allow my arm to extend, and I just kind of give him a little bit of a thumb rotation to create the perfect, the perfect amount of angle in order to escape. Um, and then he gets you in this armbar for the, the, for the second one. How tight was that? Uh, on a scale from 1 to 10, maybe like a 1.5. It was not very tight at all. I felt like, you know, maybe a toddler was grabbing my wrist. So I limped out pretty easily and then, you know, got to his back or took the back and got my choke going. What are you going to do with the 30 grand? Well, uh, what I'm going to – I'm going to – it's going to aid towards a down payment on a house as a responsible young athlete would. Awesome. And uh... – What's next? What's next? I have some seminars coming up. I have a seminar at Alliance Jiu-Jitsu in Redlands, California on the 2nd. 
Uh, but most importantly, like and subscribe our B Team Jiu Jitsu YouTube channel. Thanks, man. All right, thank you.
Well, this feels familiar. How have you been? Oh, I've been great, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, you know. I uh, have uh, the walkout again, my song, going over there, see the, the, the fans and, and everything. Uh, it's amazing, man. I love it. And, and, and look, my face. I don't have to go to the hospital and stay all night in the hospital, you know. How different did it feel walking out? I know it's a different atmosphere, uh, you know, not quite as big, but what, what did that did that feeling feel the same? The feeling, walking out, yes, 100%. You know, me over there waiting, waiting for Anthony Smith to walk is the same. I felt the same thing in the fight. I always come, relax, but ready to compete. That little, you know, that little energy, that little adrenaline. Yes, um, definitely the same. But, you know, of course, you know, Prior to the fight, the week of the fight is more relaxed, more calm, because it's not like, uh, I don't know, you know, UFC, you have that dream, you have that, that this is like a more pressure, I think, you know, and, and of course, a lot more dangers. My wife was there in the locker room with me, and she was like, uh, just smiling on her face, you know, and I say, you're not nervous, honey, you don't have to take any Xanax or anything. <laughs> Because usually for my fights, uh, she always like, uh, oh, this is the time that I wanted to throw up. You know, when they when the guy come to the to the locker room and say, Glove, you in deck, you know? She's like, yeah, that's that time I usually start feeling like I, I have to throw up. And that was all fun. Can you talk to me a little bit about how this came about? Did the UFC approach you? Did you ask for it? What was the, how that happened? No, Ed, Ed called me and, uh, and asked me, uh, a, a Glover, the guys in the fight pass gonna put a, a you know jujitsu show and um, they wanted to to grab. What do you think? I say, oh, of course, man, anytime. I love to. I thank the opportunity uh, those guys give me. By the way, they were so supportive. Uh, uh, the whole thing, my traveling situation that happened, you know, in New York. I don't know if you guys know this. I think. Over 1,800 flights got canceled. It was crazy, nightmare, and, and you know, try to stay there. But the guys were so supportive. Uh, Anthony Smith was supportive because I, I couldn't be here to make the weight. My weight was supposed to be 225. I come in 234, 232, 234. But you know, didn't have to make the weight. I say it's fine. Let's go over there. Let's have some fun. Just get here. And the, the travel agent was like amazing, trying to do everything, buying tickets here, go oh, go back to Newark, go back to New York. But uh, yeah, you know, teamwork make uh, make it happen. You know, the, the and, and people they are they, they tell me like, uh, oh Glover, thank you, you make the effort to come over here. It's easier to make an effort when everybody working with you, you know? Everybody was in the same boat, working. She was calling two in the morning, making flights and, and getting hotels. It was amazing. I, I just want to appreciate everybody. When they approached you for the fight, or for the match, did they say it was going to be Anthony? Did that make you want to do it more or less? Or you know, what, what were the thoughts when you heard it was going to be him? No, I think uh, they, they were looking for opponent. You know, they, they have a, a couple names on, on the on the rising, and um, a, a, but then Smith come come and uh, I say, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith is a good grappler. I know that. You know, MMA is different. Uh, the punches, the, the the submission attempts and stuff. Uh, I was like excited to to go over there and grapple Anthony Smith. Yeah. Were there any flashbacks in there? Did you want to throw an elbow or anything? <laughs> no, not at all. I, uh, I, uh, you know, I love Anthony Smith. By the way, he's a, he's an amazing guy, and uh, I'm glad that we just grappled today. We didn't have to hurt each other. It was a uh, was cool. It sounded like right after the first round um, that Anthony was asking for the scores. I guess he was told that there would be open scoring. Were you told that? Was that something you had anticipated? Yeah, I heard about it. I heard about it that the score was gonna be on the on the board. But I, I like it. I, I, I like the idea that they didn't tell the score because if you think about it, it's like if I if I know 
any first verse, right? Like either way, if I know that I win the first and the second round, I'm probably gonna stall in the third, right? Because I don't, even if I lose the third, I already win the match. So it's kind of cool that you don't know, like exactly like in UFC, you don't know the score. So you you just go and fight, fight more, and 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 you push the fight to get more excited for the fans. I like that. I uh. I, I, but but it was was like uh, they say it was gonna be open score like every round, but I, I like it this way better. And last one for me: How soon do you want to get back in there? How often do you think you're gonna be doing these types of things? <laughs> uh, any time, any time. This is fun. Uh, didn't get hurt. Um, they call me again. Uh, I'll, I'll be there. You know, let's do it. Hey Glover. Um, so now you're two and oh. <clears throat> over Anthony Smith, <laughs> are you going to do like arm wrestling next, or are you going to uh, do chess? You know, basketball. What's what, what's next? Uh, whatever, man. You know, uh, uh, you know. Like I say, Anthony is a great competitor, and you know, and uh, it's it's no beef. It's just a competition. We go over there and have some fun, uh, make uh, some money doing it, and uh, it's amazing. You know, I. Uh, yeah, what else? we're gonna go drink some beer right now. I I uh, I told him uh, we're gonna go to some place. He's 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 have some some place we're gonna hang out and chill, drink some beer. Maybe he's taking me down. I don't know about it. You know, I I drink a lot of beer, so <laughs> I still. You're gonna be. I think game. it's gonna be a tough match for him. Um, the video of Alex giving you a motorcycle went viral. Um, how how I guess surprising was that, and just how did it mean to you? Uh, you saw that video, you know. I cry. I could I didn't have the word to. It's like you kind of be like a little dumb kid, you know. Um, yeah, like you don't know what to do or, or say. Uh, it was a surprise. I come stressed out from Florida. I don't know if you guys know this. I was in Florida for UFC. And coming back, you know, we couldn't land in New Jersey, so we land in North Carolina. I have to drive back for for nine hours, and I got home tired. And Alex, like, I got a surprise for you. And we talk about motorcycle uh, a week before. I say, ah, oh, I want a Harley, man. We gotta get a Harley. You gotta get a Harley too. So we go Grand Canyon, you know. And, and uh, he he had it over there. He bought a, a house. But he's not in his house yet. So I swear I thought he bought it. I was like, oh, Mo, you bought it. You bought, you bought the bike, you know. And I thought he was going to leave in my garage until he gets his house. But he said, hey, it's yours, man. And I, I couldn't believe it, you know. And uh, it, very thoughtful of him. And um, I was, it's, it's more like the, the, the action. You know, he went over there because he knew I wanted it. And it was a great, I mean, expensive gift, you know. He went over there, get it, put it over there. It was, uh, was touching. I, I, um, like I say, I got emotion in there. That's awesome. Um, speaking of Alex, you know, what do you think of the matchup against Jan Bohovic? I think it's a great matchup for Alex, you know. I, again, I... I as a fighter, I have a hard time, like Anthony Smith, you know, uh, uh, Jan Blohovic, you know, uh, those guys uh, become my friend, you know. And I hate to see Alex really go out there and, and knock him out, you know, because Alex is a knockout artist. Yeah, but uh, we, he has a job, and uh, we, we, we're going against again, you know. This is it. And uh, I think it's a great matchup for Alex. I think he's going to – I think Alex is going to take over the – a whole division. He's gonna he's gonna be a champion again, in the in the light heavyweight. Do you like him going up to light heavyweight? Huh? Do you like him going up to light heavyweight? Yeah, I like him go to light heavyweight. I'm the first guy to to say. And when he say he was gonna go to light heavyweight, I was like, I love it that you go in light heavyweight because I don't want him to. I don't want to see him cutting that much weight. You don't know how much that guy cut. And uh, he's a 230 pounds right now, and he's lean. He's probably like 8% body fat. Uh, you know, and for him to drop to 185, 
it's crazy, crazy, man. I mean, I cut weight, I don't cut that much, but I know how hard it is. And as you get older, it gets harder and harder. And, uh, and that eventually can, can be bad for you as, you know, uh, health, for, bad for your health. And I don't want him to be in that position, so I'm glad. And finally, um, there's this storyline out there that people want to see. They want to see Alex beat Jan, obviously, and then go up and avenge your loss to Jamal Hill. Is that something that you would like to see? Yes, yes. I think uh, for sure the style with uh, Jamal Hill and uh, and Alex is uh, it, it's perfect for Alex. I, I, listen, Jamal Hill is a great fighter. Jan is a great fighter. We're not looking past Jan over here like that. Because uh, style makes fight, right? My style was more grappling and stuff. Jan is a tremendous striker. He beat uh, Israel Adesanya, and he was doing really good with him uh, stand up too before he started going for the ground. Jan is danger, man. He hits hard, but uh, you know, everything going our plan, and Alex passed Jan. For sure, I think Jamal Hill will be an amazing fight for, for Alex, and it would be nice. It would be nice to see him uh, revenge, you know. Nothing against Jamal Hill. He's a great guy as well, but, uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Lover, okay. um, I'll put the shift back onto you for a minute. Um, since you put your gloves down at UFC 283, what has been, like, the biggest thing you've noticed since your retirement? I guess what makes you happy in these past couple of months, if anything makes you happy? Uh, man, you know, uh, just be there uh, uh, more for the guys and not, not have to think about myself too much is is amazing thing. I have the gym size 2014, you know. I trained the fight team. I trained myself. and uh, But now being there more for the guys and not think about myself too much is is a great thing. It makes me more happy. And... Um, and just the fact that I don't have to worry about it too much, you know. I mean, this grappling uh, thing come up and uh, I train my ass off. I always train. A grappling, I'm always going to train. I just don't spar anymore, you know. I'm not going to spar Alex. I grapple him, but I'm not going to spar him anymore. I don't want to get hit anymore, man. Good. Do you think you're uh, more nervous when you're cornering Alex in one of his big fights than when you were fighting? 100%. 100%. I, I hate it. Uh, I hate it, man. I uh, I uh, hate it in a way that I love it, right? Like, you know, the winning and everything. I hate when uh, Alex lost the last fight. It was like, bro, you don't understand how uh, bad it is. I've been knocked out before, and uh, believe me, it's worse to see your guy, your friend, you know, get in that position. Uh, and it's not just that. Even when he won, it's the butterfly, and it's like I... I I start shadow box in the locker room and start sweating up because I wanted to, to take the adrenaline off. You know, when I'm fighting, we got the adrenaline, but we shadow box, we hit the pads, we get ready to fight. Right now, it's like the adrenaline is there, you just got to deal with it, you know? But uh, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm getting better with, like more relaxed and passing the, the relaxation to the guys, you know? Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it.
back to sun. Just wait. Okay. You can skip the UFC tomorrow. You know, come on. Oh, it's Saturday, right? There's potential. There's potential. <laughs> uh, Craig, I mean, congratulations on the victory. A formidable opponent that you've overcome tonight. I mean, where would this, this win put you in the rankings of jiu-jitsu right now? Well, I, I mean, I think given Philippe Pena is the pound-for-pound pound best grappler alive right now, taking him out, I believe, firmly puts me at number one. And really, it's hard for me to see anything else to do in the sport because what else is there to accomplish when you're the number one grappler? Are we going to take on Santa Claus or are we going to drink some beers? You know? It's tricky, right? I mean, so would you say that this could potentially be the last time we see you compete? I say that, but if I spend enough money tonight, I'll, I'll come back for the right price, you know? Las Vegas is the sort of place you can do that. Was there anything in the, in the matchup that surprised you? Was his performance surprising? Were you going for overtime? How do you feel you performed? All right, to sort of to sum it up, right, we, when we spoke about the match, I was over training with Izzy. Uh, when I, was, I wasn't really in training camp or anything, you know? So, like, I came back and only did, like, a three-, four-week camp. So I was like... When they asked me about it, I was like, yo, Philippe, you better not come in too heavy. Because last time I trained with him, it was like 235. And then at the weigh-ins, he showed up on the dot, 225. And I told him, I said, you better not come in heavy. Like, you better come in under 225. So when he came in at 225, I was a little concerned at his size. Obviously, I was 210. Um, and then when we went out on the mats, I saw some of the most beautifully clean legs I've ever seen in my life. There was going to be no friction with the hair there. So I was like, you know what? It's going to be hard to leg lock. We better just game the rolls and find a way to win. It's a bit of an awkward sequence, right, when you're both rolling, 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 and suddenly the mat stops and they kind of try and keep you on it. Is that a bit of a weird one, especially in overtime where time is so valuable? In that position, I'm sure you weren't necessarily upset that it was kind of getting stalled out, but do you feel like that's a bit of a weird one with the rule set? Yeah, I mean, that's the challenge, right? It's like uh, the best way to get out of the back is like a turning escape. And luckily, though, because I, I escaped in like eight seconds the first one, Nikki was yelling out to me, uh, obviously my younger brother, Nikki Ryan, uh, was yelling out to me saying that, Craig, you just need to hold the back for eight seconds. So I was surprised. Usually they'll stop it. Usually they'll be like, oh, you've secured enough time. But we kept going. So I was like, fuck, I better, maybe I'm retarded. I better keep holding the back here. And when we started rolling for the edge, I was like, I was like, Victor, bro, surely this is done, mate. But yeah, it is, it is annoying when we hit the edge. Yeah, you will... Uh I, I don't want to ruin your night, but Gordon Ryan was back here. And he wasn't very complimentary of your performance. Well, what was he saying tonight, guys? He was just saying that you didn't really achieve much and you were very good in overtime, but that was about it. And the rest of the time, you guys were resting. And I know that Gordon and you sort of go way back. How do you pull him off the toilet for the interview? Just... <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Um, <laughs> the wind bathroom's never been the same. I'll say that, eh? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it's always nice to see you guys together. You can tell that you guys are, you know, it's always like... It's an old friends meeting. Um, <laughs> it feels, from my perspective, that jiu-jitsu, especially with the fight passing, is getting bigger and bigger. And I have to say, with your podcast, El Segundo, and oh, thank you. regular jabs at Gordon, <laughs> there feels like beef and feud here that's enough to get the sort of casual MMA fan interested in jiu-jitsu. Is that something that you're aware of, or do you just enjoy irritating someone? I mean, I do it for the love of the game. You know, like if anyone looks at his Instagram, you're going to enjoy anyone tearing this guy down a bit the real problem is though i throw so many jokes at him only 10 percent get through you know what i mean it's a, it's a struggle you know his ability to read his reading comprehension very very tough you know so like i know he listens to all the podcasts thank so he gives me an extra download at least i believe you referred to him as a man entering a battle of wits unarmed <laughs> unarmed that's for, that's for sure all the brain capacity went to one of the brothers that's sadly the truth and how do you spend your evening tonight celebrating? Again, we're going, we're going to Hakkasan. I believe you're coming along. We're going to do the next interview there, right? Sure. Let's <laughs> go. Keep jiu-jitsu gay. What's uh, <laughs> fantastic tank top? What, what's that about? Uh, I mean, obviously inspired by my younger brother, Nicky Ryan. Nah, um, keep, keep Austin weird. We kind of stole that. Uh, and we turned it. We, we mixed it up a bit, you know, obviously supporting, supporting Pride Month. And... I mean, I'll tell you what, a lot of Brazilians are not very kind towards gay people, so I thought, again, they are very fun to troll, so we'll put it out there, you know? Alex is fighting next weekend. Um, just thoughts on him, thoughts on the matchup, thoughts on just what's, what's this fight mean to him? Uh, yeah, I mean, this one's interesting because, obviously, you couldn't pick a more different opponent than Islam Makachev. I had to help him prepare for Islam. I had to, like, try to figure out all the things Islam was doing. Luckily, Yair on the ground, more like a traditional jiu-jitsu guy. He really plays a lot of close guard, 
more in my wheelhouse. So when I was back in uh, Wollongong helping him prepare, much easier for me to figure out than the mysterious Dagestani bullshit, you know? Awesome. Thanks, man. How was it like having Alex there supporting you? I mean, I'm not sure if you caught it, but he was kind of geeking out when you walked out to Down Under and pulled out oh, his yeah. phone and recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it was cool. I hit him up because obviously, like, I mean, we're at Grappa. Grappa is pretty cool, but obviously what these guys are doing is very important. So, like, I'm usually in his corner. So I did ask him before. I was like, yo, do you mind if I take a match, like, 10 days before you fight? And he not only was like, go for it, he's like, I will fly in early. Typically, only flies in a week early. So he, he came in early to be here for the match, to be here for my match, which is really cool. Hakkasan, let's go.